Hi. Um, yeah, so my name is Oleg, and I'm the CEO of Bubble. And um, I'm here to talk about the, this talk is about the path we took. Uh, we're two years old, and I'm going to talk about like uh, how we got from the apps we were making uh, two years ago, abstract apps, to the kind of apps we make today, which I'm going to show in the end of this presentation. So uh, this is us two years ago. Uh, we had a series of apps uh, that we would we envisioned a series of apps we wanted to make, and we had a really strong philosophy behind those apps. So they we didn't want them to be like you know different for different sake, but we had a very strong team of uh, people from very different, I would say, markets and environments. Like because we had a contemporary artist, we had a guy with a strong gaming development background, and at the same time, we had an experienced producer and a guy who was working in retail. So we wanted to make an app, apps uh, that look like nothing you've seen you know, in the kids' market. And we had a philosophy behind those. So philosophy behind the brand is basically, we wanted to apps to, to have like a digital art approach, meaning that the people who actually play the apps, they are co-authors of that. They get to create something inside the app. And we didn't want them any specific imagery inside those apps. We wanted to leave some, you know, space for kids' imagination to interpret those uh, visuals. And we obviously want all of those apps uh, be a part of the consistent universe. And th I'm not talking about the characters, the story. I'm talking about like the visual language uh, behind those apps. And we had a gameplay philosophy, uh, which you can see here. So basically, well, a no text and, and buttons unless it's absolutely necessary. So our apps. They don't have any text at all, and as less buttons as possible, which you will probably see. And we didn't want to imitate real life. <laughs> well, that's that's changed, as you will see. But you know, uh, the idea behind those that the apps have to sort of like expand the child's sensory diapason, meaning that we don't want the child kids to play with things they can actually play with in real life. Like, and I know there's no sense in mimicking. For example, painting or drawing, you have to expand that mechanic in order to be, it to be interesting and engaging for kids on digital. And of course, music is a very important part, uh, and still is an important part of uh, Bubble Brand. So those are the people we are really inspired by. Um, Brian Eno, the inventor of ambient music, and he also invented the idea of uh, self-evolving composition. So he sort of like loosely sets the rules and the music sort of like writes itself. So he doesn't really have control of what's happening next. This is what we wanted to be to have in our apps. Um, Kandinsky, the famous Russian writer, uh, painter, uh, I'm a huge fan, this is my favorite painter. So he basically applied synesthesia, meaning that form and sound and color are all very important to the, to the painting. Uh, it is even more important than the actual story or the characters for the painting. Sesame Street, of course, I mean, in, I don't know if you know, but in, back in the 70s, they actually invited Philip Glass to uh, create soundtracks of some of their uh, educational videos for Sesame Street. And Philip Glass is Steve Reich, this is what I'm saying here, music is Lego, meaning that the way the minimalist composers uh, construct their music is they create those tiny bits of music that can be arranged and rearranged however you want by the performer. So they're sort of like give you the pieces and you you know, make something out of that. And this is a very, very first app. It's called Bubble Tap. And it's super hardcore abstract app. This is the first app we made two years ago. <laughs> this is how it looked two years ago. We thought this is going to be the future of entertainment for kids. So basically, it's an exploratory uh, space for kids. So they can tap wherever they tap, whatever they do, no interface, no buttons. As you can see, something happens with the app. And every action actually has a corresponding uh, sound design to it. It's a digital rattle toy and also works great at parties, I have to tell you. So, um, yeah. But the problem with Bubble Tap was that we sort of like, it was covered by Fast Company. We got huge, great press for it. But the problem with it that it was aimed at one-year-olds, basically. So we're at, re at small babies. And we found that parents are not really comfortable with showing the apps to uh, small children, like giving their app iPad to one-year-old. Yeah, Bubble Tap. But still, it's still in the App Store, so you can, you can get it. 
But then uh, this is uh, this is bubble draw. This is the next app we created, and this is our darling. This is the ultimate bubble app. So it's a exploratory uh, sort of like environment in which you can draw with music. So every color. Uh, has a corresponding music, uh, musical instrument attached to it, and it changes depending on which form you choose to create. So it looks kind of like this. So you draw a form, and then you tap the form, and the music starts playing. And of course the music is different every time, depending on which uh, colors you choose, depending on which forms you're drawing. And yeah, Apple really loved the app. We, yeah, Basically, we were featured, and we're still getting featured with that app a lot. They really love it. And at this point, we met Fox and Ship because I was invited to speak in Berlin at the conference called The Kids One Mobile. Uh, so they basically asked me to do that. I showed the app in the conference to a huge plus, and they approached us and said, hey, we have some insights for you. So we admire what you do, but don't you want to take that artful approach, this very abstract approach, and apply it to some specific topic, introduce, gently introduce characters, because at that point we're really, like we, we're, we're saying, we're not gonna you know, introduce any specific imagery in our apps. But they said, like, try that. And this is how the term bubble touch was born. So we said, like, okay, let's try that out. And we did. And it's called Bubble Gelato. This is what we came up with. This is, a, this is an app where you get to create ice cream and music at the same time. So every scoop has a musical phrase attached to it. And depending on which scoops you choose and depending on which uh, toppings you choose to add, the music is different every time. There's three settings, but we later on introduced an update with the Christmas characters in it. And actually, this app got to the best of 2014 in numerous um, countries, uh, so it was included in the best of 2014 by uh, App Store editorial team. And yeah, uh, I, we w at this point we were thinking, okay, so this is the way we have to go. We have to take that artful approach and apply it to something else. And yeah, in uh, in August 2014 we got acquired by Fox and Ship. We actually we merged with them. Um, and this actually brought a lot of their experience because I'm sure you know their apps. It's like 99 and Little Fox Music Box, um, Little Builders. So they, they are very strong. They have a very strong presence in the App Store. So they were like, st uh, but at this point when they acquired us, we already have had one app like basically ready for being launched in the App Store. And what we did, we had an app called Bubble ABC. So we, we thought like, okay, let's take the most overused educational topic ever, ABC, and apply bubble touch to it and see what's gonna happen. A uh, and this is what happened. A a a so basically you're constructing a song out of the letters. So every time there's, there's a grid which adjusts itself and you can, yeah. Yeah, well, Bubble ABC was our weakest app in terms of um, money, I would say. This is the, the, the biggest flop we had because it was probably, well, now when we look back at it, it was probably too abstract, I would say, because, uh, you know, parents didn't get into the whole uh, artsy alphabet concept. Uh, yeah, but. This was like a turning point, as I said. So we thought, like, okay, now let's let's take this and apply this to something else, to a specific uh, life topic. So we created Bubble Faces. So with Bubble Faces, you get to play with the characters and you can change their moods. And at the same time, you can change their uh, professions. So you get to create, I don't know, like a crying police girl, for example or like an angry angry doctor or something. So you can actually talk to the kids about the emotions, uh, like, you know, that it's it's okay to cry if you're a boy, for example, that kind of lessons. And this is uh, actually a very transitional app for us because we were going in some direction, 
we're actually thinking about like how can we apply our vision, our visual language, our brand to a specific topic, but it still looked very, very different, very artsy. And I mean, it performed okay, but not at the point mm, where we were happy with the revenue from the App Store. So we got to a point where we were asking ourselves all, all of those questions, like how do we turn that art project into a profitable business? Uh, like. How do we keep the vision? Because our art director, who's a contemporary artist, was saying, you know what, Oleg, I'm not a clown. I am not going to do a cute bunny. So I, I <laughs> so there was this uh, very, very hard, uh, very strong conversation between the team. Like, how do we balance? How do we keep the vision? How do we stay true to the core uh, brand DNA, core values of the brand, but at the same time become more profitable and uh, by m more profitable, what basically Fox and Ship uh, send our way, the message they send our way is we, people need to understand what the app is about. Because the problem, or should I say the challenge with bubble apps is not the apps themselves because uh, kids love our apps. But the problem is that since we're aiming at three to five year old um, age audience, uh, we're actually selling it to parents, not to kids. And parents find the apps weird. They don't understand what the apps are about. They don't, they don't understand, you know, why do they have to show it? Because they were not buying into the idea of sh you know, buying art. Well, some of them did, but not at the scale we were hoping for. So, well, actually I have a funny story because I was, um, you know, my younger daughter who is, who is four years old, I w she fell asleep and I was taking her to the bed and in, in, in sleep she mumbled like, hey dolphin, do you wanna fly my home tonight? And I was like, Oh my God, can you understand like, what is happening inside her head? She's flying with dolphins, you know, inside the dream. Can you imagine like, uh, of course, I mean, if she was 16, I would be wondering, wondering who is that dolphin character. But <laughs> yeah, since she was four, I was like, uh, well, yeah, there's nothing weird in our apps because it only feels weird for parents, not for kids. And we have to somehow overcome that. So, uh, while we were thinking what we're going to do, we actually took and make an update to Bubble Draw, our original, uh, you know, Apple darling. So what we did, we introduced a new musical mode, jazz. But we also introduced this button here, which you will see what it does now. Wait. When you press it, yeah, when you press the button, it gives you a predefined picture, which is only which which already has all of the features of the apps, you know, in there playing. And it worked. So Apple refeatured it again on the front page as the best new app. And yeah, so we introduced a gallery of ready art and it uh, on the on the screenshots we actually showed real uh, objects like apples or fish, you know, drawn within the app, and it worked. So you know, people started buying into the app because we actually we didn't lose our artist integrity or whatever you call it, but at the same time we saw a like really, you know, the revenue stream went up, which boosted our morale. But at the same time, we already were working on the concept, which is called City Cars Adventures, which we released um, last May. So. These are the first two screenshots our art director did. Basically, we this, this is all we knew. We had like a topic. It has to be about cars. It has to be 3D because we, s we believe then, and we still believe that 3D, you know, I mean, I'm not necessarily thinking this is true, but I think for a lot of uh, parents out there, 3D feels there's the perceived quantity of the app is higher when they see a 3D app. They think they're getting more for a 3D app. So we thought, okay, let's take our visual language, let's take that brand and transfer that to 3D and see what happens because no one knew what happened. Like we, we had like four months um, production timeline. So we, we launched Unity and we're like, okay, there we go. What are we gonna do with it? And this is what we did. So you pick a car and you just basically try it through, the, through this lush visual scenario. And a lot of stuff is happening, you know, on the roadside.
and Prote, the art director, he was, uh, we were all thinking like, did we lose it? Did we lose our art artist integrity? Is it still bubble? And the first review I see on the Russian app store on the day of release is like, this is a game for drug addicts. Uh, drug addicts. I was like, okay, yeah, it's okay, bubble is there. Bubble is still there. <laughs> yeah, we, we kept the brand, so the brand is fine. Uh, yeah, but, uh <laughs> so Cars was, and still is, our best selling app. So this is the best, the best we've ever had. Like, so we thought, okay, this is the right direction. Yeah, this is the right direction. This is where we have to go because we took a very familiar topic, which everyone knows, cars, and then we sort of like put it into the bubble world, bubble universe, and we didn't lose any integrity or anything, but we still managed to create a very successful app. So we followed that with the Planet's Adventures, which you can hopefully still see in the App Store because it, it was it got an editor's choice across EU uh, last week. And it was featured as the best new app in US, Canada, Asia, and it's still you can still see it in there. And this is the first screenshot again. So with this without like a week, gonna take the same concept and because the previews we were getting from the users, they were basically saying there's not enough, not enough gameplay, there's nothing to do, it's too simple, it's just again, this is for parents. I'm we, all of the kids I saw that loved the app, but some parents felt that they were not getting enough. So we thought, okay, we're gonna take that concept and bring it to another topic, planes, and uh, add a lot of gameplay. This is what we came up with. So you ha we have 30 planes here which kids ha have to unlock. So it's a proper game, like a proper runner game with unlocking bonus system and everything. You see, you're unlocking different planes. But the, the thing is that even three-year-olds can pick it up and play and fly for one minute, and it's as easy as that, as easy as cars. It still works for three-year-olds, fine. And, well, I can't, the problem with, I would love to say right now that we are 100% happy with how planes performed, but I can't say that. Uh, we're not super happy with how planes performed right now, and we are actually sort of like, so this is where we are right now, and this is a, a story in the making, I should say. So we are still thinking, because um, up to that point, uh, every lesson we learned from an app, we would apply it to another app, and we would see you know, how we progress. We would see the revenue going up, 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 up. But now with that one, so we're still thinking like, uh, so this is us, like two years ago, hopefully knowing what we're doing, we're hopefully more experienced, but we're, I mean, this is basically a picture that shows like what's next for Bubble. Well, we don't know yet, we'll see. Well, check us in the app store, you'll see the next step. You'll, you'll know what we came up with. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any clue whatsoever or any, I don't know, idea why planes didn't work and cars did? Is it too gamey for the target group, maybe? Well, the only, <laughs> because we were basically comparing the feature of cars with planes, and planes actually got the better featuring than cars, so that's not the case. So the only thing we, can we came up with is probably the topic, because, I mean, if you compare the two, uh, obviously cars are more popular with kids than planes. But still, I mean, planes is such a strong topic, so why, how could that influence the revenue that it performed like wars and cars? I don't know, yeah. If you people have any ideas, I would love mm. to hear them. I would have thought so as well, especially now with this Disney movie out and stuff, so that... You, Plane, know, you mean Disney planes? Yeah, yeah, it will be in the parents' minds somehow. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. <laughs> I, I, we actually didn't think about that, but yeah, we followed basically uh, Pixar with first cars and then planes, but I yeah. I can see a pattern there. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is the next thing you're thinking. Okay, we're doing a vehicles adventure series, so we got we have had cars. What's next? Planes. Um, I wanted to sh to know if you can share with our audience uh, maybe some insights about the 2D to 3D transition. And you were mentioning that with 3D, parents feel they are getting more. Um, is it something you can you know number numbers based? Is is it data based? Um, do you think you'll be getting back to 2D and how 
can a company choose if with their next app? Should we go 2D or 3D? Uh, look, I'm not saying there is no way to create a successful 2D app. Just look at TinyBob, uh, but <laughs> all of their apps are 2D. But uh, well, for us, there's no going back. Basically, we were. I mean, the results we're seeing is like uh, cars performed like five times better than any of our previous apps. So it's like okay, not five, but three times better for sure. So. Uh, I mean, when you see this difference, you're like, okay, yeah, we clearly have to go that way. Uh, plus for the team, when they got the sense of 3D, when they actually, you know, got the, get to experience the possibilities out there in 3D, they're like, oh no, there's no going back. We're not going back to 3D, to 2D now. Yeah. I don't know, maybe at some point when we have a, a good idea, and we're definitely gonna work on Bubble Draw again, because I mean, people love it, it's a bestseller, Apple loves it, and they keep asking us to do something with it, probably Apple TV, so yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah okay. Thank you, thank you very much. Thanks so much, Oleg.